These are the parts you're going to need to construct the dual loop experiment. Uh, the number one important part is the enamel coated magnet wire which you used to be able to get a Radio Shack. I don't know if Radio Shack is going to come back in business but we, you need uh, a small portion about a meters worth of 22 gauge and a meters worth of 26 gauge. Uh, this magnet coated, this wire I mean I buy it in bulk anyway so I get it in big spools. This isn't bare wire. This has got a very very thin enamel coating which insulates it. I believe the insulation is good up to 300 volts. I'm not sure. Uh, I guess it depends on the make of wire. And the reason why I picked the ones you can get from Radio Shack because if it probably can still get it somewhere. Uh, the next thing you're going to need is uh, contact cement, a little cup and stir for your epoxy. You're going to need epoxy. Now the epoxy you can substitute something else. We're basically going to use the epoxy to um, lock down the end leads of the inductors we're going to build. You can use probably uh, silicone adhesive, um, anything that dries hard and will stick to plastic. Um, if you're going to use the epoxy, make sure you test it because epoxy that's been sitting around for a while, all of a sudden for some reason I found certain epoxies just sitting on the shelf after a couple of years it stops curing and you just end up with a glob of glob and it doesn't work. So just make sure if you're going to use epoxy and it's been sitting on your shelf, make sure you test it. You're going to need some tape. You're going to need two large plastic dinner plates. Pencil with an eraser. Ruler. pair of scissors. Uh, I think that's everything. If not, we'll, we'll mention it later. You begin with the dinner plate and I've chosen a dinner plate that has grooves in it and that's the important part is, is getting a nice circular groove that we're going to put the wire into. Uh, and so what you do is you begin with the contact cement and you pick a groove and you just get the contact cement into the groove, it's getting more on the plate than in the groove takes a little pra bit of practice to roll it into the groove. Don't worry about overdoing it a little bit because this contact cement when it, when it sets up it thins out to a very thin film so it's okay to have a little bit more. And what we're going to do is we're going to use this contact cement to hold the wire into the groove. And what this contact cement is, it's basically like an adhesive. It goes on like a liquid and after about 15 minutes it turns into like an adhesive, like like the back of tape. And that allows you to tack uh, the wire into the groove. And after about an hour it cures and so whatever's stuck to it remains stuck to it. So you've got 45 minutes of working time, which is more than enough. Okay. And you let that set for 15 minutes. And while it's sitting, get your ruler, pick any part along the edge and then make two marks on the crown of the plate you know, probably near one of the grooves. They're about a half inch apart. I can use that one. Okay, and wait for the glue now to set up for 15 minutes. Okay, once the contact adhesive has had time to set up and it's become uh, tacky without being wet then you know it's time to uh, go. What you do is you start at the two half inch tick marks you've made and we're going to go around this way we're going to go this way so put the arc of the wire in the direction you're going to go spool some out put it into the groove oh. Give yourself a little extra here. And then where the tick mark is for this side, roll the wire over 
the end. This is going to form your leads that we're going to hook up to the inductance meter. What you want to do is temporarily, you're going to use some tape just to hold this down so it doesn't get away from us while we're on spool or and roll it over the back side so it holds it really good. And then what you do is you take the pencil with the eraser. You can even use your fingernail. I found that works just as good. And it's just roll it into the glue or the contact adhesive rather. Okay, I probably started this too early because the contact adhesive is still a little wet. Make sure it's down nicely into the groove. Okay, when you get to the end, go a little bit beyond. It's okay if you leave a little bit too extra. Better too extra than too little. Uh, the green wire, by the way, is, 20, is the 26 gauge. Okay, when you get to the end, again, you hold it down with your fingernail, roll it over the edge, and tack this one down with a piece of tape as well. Don't cover the top ridge with the tape, just along the edge. I'll show you why in a second. Once that's down, just go back one time and make sure that the wire is nicely in the groove all the way around. Looks good. Okay. And get out your epoxy. I already mixed my epoxy up. And then along the top edge of the crown, we're going to seal in the two leads of the wire. And go down the back side a little bit. Because what we're doing is making sure that these leads don't come loose. Because this adhesive that we're using on the body of the loop is not very... Uh, it can, it can tack things down pretty well, but when you start hooking things up to the inductance meter, you really need to hold these ends down, otherwise they're going to rip off pretty easily. Uh, and then we're going to mark this. I think we're going to do it this way, 26. Okay, and I've already done the 22 gauge one, which is over there. Uh, so now let this cure up for about an hour. Okay, the last step of construction is once the epoxy has cured, you want to gently take off the tape without damaging the wire. It's okay to cut it, just don't cut the wire. enough. You don't have to take all the tape off. Just free the wire from the tape. Okay, now, in this step, what we're going to do is we're going to put brass washers on the ends of the wires to make them uh, a little more sturdy up to the test. Because uh, just trying to clip these wires into the fixture usually will snap or at the wire. So we want to reinforce the ends of the wire with brass washers. So what we're going to do is we get our millimeter ruler out here and from the loop, a 
approximately, it doesn't be that accurate, we want to go about two and a half centimeters back and clip the leads. Okay. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take our X-Acto knife, wherever the heck I put the darn thing. There it is. And we're going to shave off half a millimeter of the lacquer on the end. Now be careful, the other wire has lacquer that matches the co color of the wire, so it's hard to tell when you scrape the lacquer off. This wire has got a different color, so you can tell as I'm working here that I'm getting the lacquer off because the red wire is changing to copper. Do this over here. do it from the other side. Don't cut yourself. You have to do it from each direction because this stuff will just get in the way. Once you get the lacquer off, then you're going to tin it, tin the wire, and I think the heating will take some more of the lacquer off, anything you missed. Now don't heat it too long because you're going to cook the epoxy. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take each one of your brass washers here, and what we want to do is we want to solder it along the edge. Okay, so don't take the tarnish off the faces. The tarnish will keep the solder from sticking to the faces. We want the faces clear to make contact with the fixture. So just you know a little bit of one edge. Just get it down to the to the brass. And what's that? Once that's done, you want to tin this too. Again, get that solder all over the edge that you and you'll notice it won't stick to the face, just to the edge that you, you filed. And then what you're going to do This takes a little bit of gymnastics here and a steady hand, which I don't have today. You're going to solder the wire to the edge like that. Now, I'm doing that quickly. I'm going to fix that because that's not quite that good. I just don't want to waste camera time doing it. So, in the end, we're going to end up with, with this. I need to get a little bit more bearing. Probably a good idea. Let's put a little arc in the wire first little bend so it matches the bend of the washer. Let's try to get the next one going good. Getting the right angle is important on this. I hold my hand against the table, I can probably steady myself. Yeah, that was a lot better. So and what we're going to end up with, and I'm going to fix the other one, is two leads. It look like this to go into the fixture. 
And so that's how we're going to measure it. That'll reinforce the edge because the fixture can be pretty brutal on these very fine wires. Okay, the last step um, in creating these, once you have all your, your connectors soldered on the end um, and everything is dried, we want to get a good approximation for the length of the wire. The reason why we want to do this is because we want to calculate the, induct, uh, sorry, the resistance of the wire from a resistance table because the inductance meter can give us the resistance as well and that would be a good check to make sure that all our connections are solid that the wire is indeed the right type of wire that you know in, in the because in the Radio Shack package sometimes I've gotten the wrong diameter wire so we need to double check all this is more of a check than anything else so what we know from measuring I already measured that the loop diameter is equal to 23.25 centimeters we're going to use that to compute the radius of the loop, I mean the perimeter of the loop, sorry. And from that, we're going to subtract 12 millimeters. And then we're going to add approximately 2 centimeters, or 4 centimeters total for the leads. And that should give us the uh, total uh, length. So when we multiply that length times the resistance table, we're going to come up with a uh, loop resistance that we should expect to read. Okay, so once we get all the dimensions down, our loop diameter is 23.25 centimeters times pi, works out to 73.04 centimeters. And I probably should have just dropped the 04, or the, the 4 rather, but I, I carried it along. And then we're going to subtract 12 millimeters for the gap in the perimeter here. And that brings us to 71.84 centimeters. And then we're going to add 2 centimeters back for each lead length. Okay, so that's an addition of 4 centimeters, which brings us back up to 75.84 uh, centimeters for the total, uh, uh, the total path length, length of the conductor. So then we take our 0.7584 meters times 338 milliohms per meter. That brings us to our path resistance of uh, basically uh, 257 millimeters. Ah, sorry, milliohms. Always getting my words backwards. Uh, I've done that for the other, the other inductors uh, as well. Um, that one, this one I crossed out was just for the, the loop length and what I'm doing now I'm using the the 0.7584 for all three because they're pretty much pretty close to the same to get the path resistance of each one and I've done that for the 22 gauge one as well uh, I don't know where it is right now but I've done it for that one as well so what you're going to end up with is three loops the first loop being a 22 gauge loop with a check resistance of 40.16 milliohms a 26 gauge wire inductor with a check resistance of 101.5 milliohms and a 30 gauge. I added the 30 gauge uh, at the last minute so I didn't actually film the construction of it uh, or, or, or the I didn't I didn't add it to the parts list but so add another one to the parts list and it's got a check resistance of 257 milliohms. The last loop the collapse loop is uh, constructed by taking some 30 gauge wire and we're going to use a tape measure and, and tape out or measure out 76 centimeters you have 76 centimeters. You take the wire, put the two ends together, make sure you don't have any kinks in the wire. I'm sure if you get the kinks out before you do this. And 
so you stretch it flat. Okay, then what you do is holding on to it, is you get yourself a drill with a paper clip stuck in it, and you put the loop over the paper clip, and you hold it out straight, and you turn on the drill. And you get to about, oh, I don't know, a, a turn every half centimeter or every centimeter. It doesn't really matter that much. Uh, then what you do is you solder your brass washers onto the end to give you good solid contacts, and you should end up with your collapsed loop like this. And that's the fourth loop. So that ends the construction part of the loops. Thank you very much.